Hey, my name is Kaya and in this video I will show you why Malta is a perfect winter escape in Europe if you're looking for mild weather, blue sky, crystal clear water and most important of all, absolutely mind-blowing architecture. So this is my guide to how to travel Malta during off-season. Malta is an island country consisting of an archipelago in the Mediterranean Sea. With its half a million citizens, Malta is one of the smallest countries in Europe, both when it comes to the area and population. The currency is Euro and the official language are Maltese and English, plus approximately 66% of Malta's population speaks Italian as well. Since Malta is located only around 100 kilometers from the southern Italian island Sicily, which means that day trips to Italy thanks to frequent ferry connections are very much possible. So we are staying in Valletta right by the sea, but it is way too cold to swim. It is 17 degrees as you can see I'm wearing a jacket, but still for us coming from Poland and Denmark It is much warmer than it was at home. So 17 degrees in Sun and blue sky. It's still not nice for us But yeah, unfortunately no swimming. The pool is pretty nice here. It's quite big very windy though, very windy. Malta is known for its beautiful blue water and rocky coastline. But if you're planning to visit Malta during winter season, the average temperature here is around 9 to 17 Celsius degrees. So not really beach weather. During the summer, they put beaches here and I guess you can go down to the water right here. Oh, it must be so nice to swim with this view. However, keep in mind that the temperatures here change a lot during winter, so it's good to bring a combination of both winter and summer wardrobe. So the tricky thing about places like this during the winter is that the weather changes every five minutes. Ten minutes ago it was quite windy, I was wearing a sweater and a jacket and then as soon as we went outside of the hotel it just became really sunny and now it's super warm. So my family went up to leave some of our stuff so we don't, don't boil. I'm sitting in a t-shirt right now and I'm completely fine, I'm really warm. There was a bee sitting on my finger. So we just passed through the Christmas market and now we're gonna go and explore the old town of Valletta. During the winter season, the place that is most happening on the island is definitely Valletta, Malta's capital. Valletta is often referred to as open air museum um, and as soon as you see the city you basically understand why. Valletta is very very beautiful city with very rich history and plenty of historical sites that you can see as for example St. John's Co-Cathedral Upper Baraka Gardens and Grandmaster's Palace. And just getting lost and wandering through the streets of Valletta is experience itself because the city truly is very, very beautiful. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but it is a very steep hill and I have to walk up very steep hill basically the whole island is just covered in hills so when you're driving it is actually quite difficult to drive because it's basically just like up and down and round and you know I mean it doesn't really go straight and that's also why it takes you way more time to just get around the island with its 400,000 inhabitants Valletta is the smallest capital in Europe but with plenty of shops and great restaurants the city definitely has cosmopolitan vibe to it so I totally lost my family. I think my strategy is just going to be sitting here and waiting for them to find me. 
Or maybe I will use this device called mobile phone. What I find pretty interesting is that before I came here, I always had this perception of Malta being a small island. And it is a small island, but what I mean is that Valletta actually has a pretty like cosmopolitan feeling. This city, as you can see, like the buildings are very big and high. High, I mean like six floors high, like which is high European standard. But it does it does have a feeling of a big city. Okay, that strategy is not really working out for me. I think I have to now I'm weird when it's if you care about the Christmas spirit and decorations, Malta is a good place because even though the weather is not very Christmassy here, I mean it's kind of warm for Christmas unless you come from Australia, then maybe it's cold for you. But majority of Malta's population are Christians, majority is Catholic, so they do celebrate Christmas here and there is plenty of like Christmas decoration and Christmas trees. Malta consists of three islands, Malta, Camino and Gozo. During winter there is not much to do in Camino, the smallest of the three islands, since Camino is mainly known for the beautiful blue lagoon, however the second biggest island, Gozo, is definitely worth checking out. Whoa. It is very windy but nice and sunny. I have to be careful because the waves are so big when we got out of the car it was like literally raining I mean not really raining it was just like the waves because they're so big and even though we were here at 10 a.m. we didn't make it to the 10 30 ferry so now we have to wait they're like literally I, I'm not even exaggerating I know I'm always exaggerating but this time I'm not there are like literally five people in the queue in front of us and we still didn't make it so um, a good advice is I guess to come early if you want to make it to the ferry the best way to explore Gozo is to put a whole day aside and try to catch the ferry connecting Gozo and Malta as early as possible. Because despite being a very small island with a population of only 37,000 people, there is a lot to do and see in Gozo. Gozo is much smaller than Malta and the vibes are very different, way more relaxed and peaceful. You know what's really interesting? That the whole island is basically maintained in the same color. It's all like this, like, how would you call this color? Like, cream bash sort of color. I'm sitting here waiting for my family. We're getting some pizza and some traditional pastry. So this is what we bought. It's like traditional pastry. One of them is filled with meat. It's from my brother. And the other one is filled with cheese. And it's for me. There are a couple of charming small towns and villages you can explore around the island, but Gozo is mainly known for its beautiful nature and landscapes, amazing beaches, rock formations, cliffs. And on top of that, Gozo is home to a temple complex, which dates back to approximately 3600 BC, which makes it even older than the pyramids of Egypt. So safe to say that for a little island like this, Gozo does offer a fair deal of attractions. During the winter, the island can get very windy, which means two things. One, take good warm clothes with you. And two, figure out what is the best way for you to get around the island. So we chose to buy a tour and we had a guide who took us around and showed all the highlights, which is not something we usually do at all. But in case of Gozo, it turned out to be a really good decision because all the popular sites are basically scattered all around the island and because of the narrow roads it does take a while to get from one place to another plus weather conditions can make it quite dangerous to drive if you're not familiar with the island 
this island is officially the windiest place I've ever experienced. No, honestly, I'm not even exaggerating. It's so windy here. The only reason why I even took out my camera right now is that we are like in between buildings. And apparently it is super normal here during the winter. It's always very windy. Apparently during the summer people are actually like swimming here because obviously it doesn't look like it's bay. I mean if you would try to swim today you would probably not make it alive. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, be a mate and subscribe to my channel and I hopefully see you soon. <laughs> we do have a pretty nice pool at our hotel, but it is pretty much useless at this time of the year because it is very windy. And it is way too cold. Should I try? Yeah, I mean, it, it is. It is freezing cold. <laughs>